Hello, uh, I'm uh, Yu Hong Wang. I'm a professor in the School of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences. Uh, it's kind of exciting to hear all the things that's happening on campus. I would put in a plug that my colleagues uh, in Earth and Atmospheric Sciences do climate change and we do air quality and ocean stuff. So please think of us when you're doing your uh, wonderful projects. <clears throat> What I'm going to talk to you about today is um, fire, climate, and air quality. Fire is an integrated process of the climate system, and fire emits large amount of organic carbon, black carbon, and volatile organic carbon, which produces ozone in the atmosphere through chemistry. Now, Professor Brewer talked about all these monitoring in high schools, and they're mostly, I presume, monitoring ozone and aerosols. Now, when you think about fire, this is something that we humans have dealt with for a long time. You know, if you look at the ancient Greeks, they think of a world made of four fundamental elements. Fire was one of them. The ancient Chinese thought about the world made of five fundamental elements. Fire was one of them. And going back further, um, over 12,000 years ago, um, there's this ape species called Homo sapiens who figured out how to make use fire, and uh, they become us. Well, we become what we are, partly because of fire, right? Now, if you look at charcoal records in the past thousands of years, humans have made use of fires in agriculture and social economic development. And you would think that we as humans must have known how to deal with fire after thousands, if not tens of thousands of years. But the fact is, we don't. Um, if you, we look at the United States, back um, about 100 years ago in the first half century of um, 20th century, the US policy, and uh, like many developed the world, was suppressing fire, and which is still the policy for China today. And uh, by late 1990s, when we started seeing all these emergence of megafires, we realized that that policy is probably not correct. Now, in the past 20 years, we've been seeing more and more of these large-scale megafires, um, partly because of that policy, and more importantly, because of climate change, which brought hotter and drier weather into the US. And uh, in the study that we published last year, we looked at what could happen in 2025. Um, there's going to be more burning in 2025, and the fire contribution to aerosols will double. Now, in relative terms, compared to um, power plants and the cars and trucks emissions, fire emissions are going to be more important, much, much more important for air quality uh, in the U.S. 20, 50 years down the road. Um, there's also another very important issue, which is fire prediction. We, even today, with all the wonderful computers that we have, we lack the capability of predicting fire accurately, which contributed to the tragedy that happened last year in uh, Maui, Lahana, and also to Texas just about a few weeks ago. And if you think that U.S. has problems with fire, but there, there's actually other countries that have bigger problems, like in Indonesia, like in Brazil. But what I'm going to talk about is Africa, which that continent burns about 50% of fires um, of the whole Earth. And fire is central for Africa, much more so than for North America. Over the time scale of millions of years, fire basically was the main driver shaping up the mosaic landscape uh, that we see today, providing the habitat that we see today for the wonderful wildlife that we see there. Um, and uh, it's a systematic sort of system that just burns very regularly. And we published a paper earlier this year um, discussing the importance of fire emissions of aerosols, which interacts with cloud. And that interaction feeds back to the climate and sust helps to sustain fire. But this very important sort of systematic system in Africa is being threatened by climate change and the social economic development. 
Uh, you may not know that if, um, burn and slash and burn is still the major practice for Africans, um, for agriculture as well for as well as for development. But there's no regulation. There are many countries there. Nobody regulates, and people burn as they like. Um, and there's no considerations for the ecosystems, for the habitats. So what we're thinking is that we really sh ought to figure out a way to introduce modern practices for agriculture, for economic development for that continent while keeping in mind the importance of fire. Not suppressing it, but keeping it healthy, uh, managing it in a way that would mitigate uh, the impact of climate change, that would protect and preserve the ecosystems and habitats for the wildlife in that continent, and importantly, um, make people, um, you know, live better uh, in that continent. So, you know, we have this sort of team uh, formed with colleagues um, in at tech, uh, from economics, uh, from uh, computer science, and uh, in the ES and the biology, as well as colleagues uh, um, in other institutes in the US. And we're thinking um, in two directions. One is to figuring out, you know, what we should do with Africa. And the secondly, you know, what can you do with fire predictions and the management uh, in the US? So I'm here, I'm hoping that if you hear this is interesting, uh, please let me know, uh, join us, and we, we look for um, you know, researchers and uh, other people in areas that we need. And this is a, a, a definitely an interdisciplinary area that you cannot do uh, with faculty in one school or two or three schools. Thank you. Thank you.